I want to say thank you to the people who bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And shout out to the Nerd Tribe. Let's talk about this looming diesel shortage. I've talked about this before. And number one, are we going to run out of diesel? No, we're not. Are we going to have supply chain shortages? Guess what? We already have supply chain shortages. I have not one, not two, but three cars in the shop waiting on parts. And I was talking to my mechanics and they said the supply chain issue is getting worse. So let's talk about the supply chain. What is constitutes the supply chain? Manufacturing. <laughs> so manufacturing is off. Literally, um, I'm, I'm going to do a review on the Porsche, but I haven't gotten around to that. But literally last November, I ordered a Porsche 911 Turbo. I just got it in October. So everyone is facing supply manufacturing chain shortages. And what does this have to do with the looming diesel shortage it's gonna get worse. If you go back and remember when the pandemic started and we ran out of toilet paper, there was not a toilet paper shortage. There was no toilet paper. Fortunately for me, I lived in a house with five bathrooms, so I would always get the jumbo economy side. And just for some reason, I went ahead and got not one, not two, but three of the 30 roll packages and put them in the laundry room just before the pandemic. So I was able to ride it out. Cause you know, I was like, I got five bathrooms. I need to have, you know, at least three rolls of toilet tissue in each bathroom for replenish. So I was good there, but what, you know, this whole notion that we're going to run out of diesel ain't happening. What will happen? I don't think you have missed this. So I'm going to speak to you like you're an intelligent adult. This whole year, we've had runaway inflation. Gas has gone up. Food has gone up. Housing from the rental side to the appreciation of houses and houses prices are starting to come down and you're starting to see price cuts. But if the house went up 30% and you see a four or 5% discount on it, it, it still is way above where it was last year. Way, way, way above. So what's going to happen is things are going to get more expensive surprise shock I mean you know I, I saw like someone left a very detailed well constructed comment talking about hey no we're not going to run out of diesel but prices are going to go up I don't refute that yeah if you have been paying attention prices have been going up all year so we're going to get more of the same. We're going to get more of the same. And now <laughs> the election yesterday was election day. I, I cast it my vote. Hopefully you did, too. And now we're going to see the real collapse. We're going to see things get pretty dicey. We're going to see some very bad things happen. Like this whole notion of to prepare. Uh, there, there's a channel, a newer channel that's coming up and what you can do to prepare for inflation. All right, I got a, I got a question for you. All right, so 
I'm about to go get off. I'm about to go off script. I'm about to get really, really strange here. Let's say you were living in the jungle and you were living in the jungle and you lived in a straw hut and you had been living in the straw hut and you've been fishing in the river and you've been cooking your fish on the open fire then one day you notice that the jungle is on fire at that moment what could you do to prevent that your straw hut from being burnt down and as you watch the fire come closer and closer and closer and you know you you get to the point you're like I, I gotta leave so you grab your stuff you grab your fish hooks you go down by the river and you watch your straw hut burn down. That is the position that many of you are in. There's nothing you can do to prepare for inflation. Cause see, let's kind of go back. Let's say you were living in the jungle and you met some elder jungle people. And it, you know, they saw you were building your straw hut and they were like, I wouldn't do that, Sonny. And you're like, why not? It's like, well, every now and then we get fires here. And if you build a straw hut, it's going to burn down. We would recommend that you go down to the river and collect a bunch of rocks and build your house out of rock and stone. So after sitting down and thinking about it, it's like, that sounds like a good idea. So you go down to the river and you start bringing up rocks and you build your house out of stone and then fast forward a few years later jungle catches on fire but not only have you um, built your house on stone but you have built a perimeter around your house out of stone and you have a little stone fence and it's the fire is coming closer and closer the fire literally goes around your stone situation so your your stone house is just fine and you know the jungle is burned down but you still got a place to live the river is still providing fish see the time to prepare is years in advance see that's why i see these all you know these you know now preppers i'm not talking to the preppers the preppers or I, I was actually watching this thing on 60 minutes I believe where these builders got a decommissioned nuclear silo and they built an apartment complex in the silo and they were selling these suckers for two and three million dollars now that type of preparation having a bunker having food, having water on hand before the crisis. That's how you can prepare. You can't prepare for the cri like right now, inflation is here. It's knocking, hey, what's going on? It's me, your boy, inflation. What's up? What's up? You thought you were gonna get those eggs for a dollar 30? Ha 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 ha! Those eggs are now $3.50. I did that. You thought you were gonna get that bread? You thought you were gonna get that bread? For a buck fifty? <laughs> nah, player. That bread is now $4.25. I did that. I'm working hard. I am making the prices of everything that you absolutely need go up. Food, gas, Oh yeah, I'm about to work on diesel next. <laughs> diesel was like four dollars of change. When I'm finished, diesel gonna be six dollars seven bucks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am out here working. And that's this message was brought to you by Inflation. Your boy Inflation out here in these streets flexing. That's what's going on. So you know. Once again, we're not going to run out of diesel. You want to know why? Because we actually are exporting diesel to other countries. And before we run out of diesel, we would stop exporting diesel to other countries and keep it all here at home, which could potentially happen, which could potentially happen. Um, but 
one of the big factors that has caused this is the war Russia has with the Ukraine. Ukraine, Russia is the, the largest supporter, exporter of oil to the European countries. And that's why we started exporting diesel because everyone's like, ooh, Putin bought. Putin bad. We're not going to buy oil from Putin. We're going to try to crash the Russian economy to keep them from, you know, waging war on Ukraine. And it ain't worked. You know, Putin's still attacking Ukraine. They're still doing stuff. I mean, it's a sad, sad situation. But that's one of the keys to this diesel uh, shortage. But... I don't see that abating no time soon. Putin is a stubborn so-and-so. He's a stubborn so-and-so. So I don't see him chilling or easing up on that no time soon. And um, one of the things that you ha guys have got to look at and understand is the reality of the situation. Right now, we're in an inflationary cycle that I, the way that I read the tea leaves, is 2023, we're going to see mortgage interest rates north of 10%. And they're almost six, seven, you know, depending upon your credit score, if you got the best credit, you can get it for 6.9%. Six, 6 if you got a few things on your credit, you're at 7%. So we're going to have a situation in 2023 where you can have the best credit and you're still going to be paying 10% interest on your mortgage. Now, is this going to stop people from buying houses? No, it's not. There are going to be people there. See, there, there are people who have been socialized that they need a house. And they're going to do whatever they need to do to get that house. If they got to take the hit, pay that 10% interest rate and hopefully refinance when rates drop some years in the future. This is not going to be interest rates going to go to 10% and drop six. No, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's going to take a long time for interest rates to come down. Interest rates are going to shoot up north of 10% in 2023. And that once again, that's not that's not what's going to tank the housing market, because even with uh, interest rates, because like my plans, my my thoughts were to buy another house next year, and let me tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a situation. Because this, this I, I have a few options in my mind. Option number one, find a house on the market that the price is correct and I can get in this house and just buy it. Option number two, if the economy is still funky, find a house to rent where the owner is willing to sell in the future. And option number three, buy some land and build. So that's kind of where I'm at because um, housing market is funky. And even with housing starting to collapse and crash in certain markets, housing prices are still way up. I found a house, I posted it on my community page that they bought this house in 2018 for $400,000. They recently tried to sell this house for $1.8 million. Now, let me go ahead and explain some stuff to you. <sighs> right now, there's a lot of builders who are building million dollar plus houses in regular neighborhoods. And there's one modern house. I've been watching it for months. Let, let me explain something to you. And this is something that I know. I feel that people get caught up in the hype cycle. And this is where business like. I lived in a neighborhood with several million dollar houses. 
and it was easy to get people to buy these houses because this house was a million, that house was a million, around the corner of these houses, this house was three million, this house was two million. I personally would not buy a million dollar house in the neighborhood of houses that are not even close to a million dollars. Where this house, they tried to get 1.8, the houses are about at, at 700. So for, you know, and I, we will see because I feel one of the challenges, there's this one house that's a modern house. They, they spare no expense. It's a beautiful house. Just think the location is wrong because once again, I would not ever buy a million dollar house in a normal neighborhood because yes, that house the comps, the comps are comps are trash. So that's one of the things. And I see a lot of people trying to do that stuff with little foresight and planning. Like I could tell you a location where if they had built that house, it was on Long Island Drive, which is not too far from here. There was a land that for sale. Uh, they were selling the land because it was five acres. If they had built let's say um three or four modern houses on that land at five and two and three they would it would have been a much much easier sell because literally around the corner on on long island there's multiple two three and four and five million dollar homes multiple homes not even a mile away from that location so me personally knowing what i know about real estate i would never ever buy a house that expensive in a regular neighborhood because those houses in that regular neighborhood are never going to appreciate to the price of that house anytime soon uh, there was one house i saw that sold for seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars but they paid 150 30 years ago 30 years ago so it took that house 30 years to appreciate six hundred thousand dollars which is good because if you bought that house and you lived in that house raised your family in that house and you grew old in that house that was a nice exit it was a very nice exit because you only paid 150 and even with you know paying a mortgage Let's say you, you, your mortgage, you paid out 300. You still did well. But like I said, I am just pre prepping myself for next year's real estate market because if it's still funky, I will abandon option number one. And then I would like, and like, I, I've already started practicing. Uh, someone had a house for rent and I was like, would you be opposed to selling this house? And, you know, just to get a feel for where people are, because straight up, I ain't moving again. After this last move, you know, real talk. The reason that I re-signed my lease is because I didn't want to move. I did not want to go through that. And especially in this funky, crazy real estate market right now. Um, I didn't really want to um, deal with that. So, and you know, option number four, I could just stay here. So we will see what will happen because my lease will be up November. And then if I re-sign another lease, then my lease will go from November to December. So, you know, got a lot of time. This is why, because this is why I'm consistently posting stuff on the community page about real estate, because I know for me to get that house next year, I got to start looking now. I got to know what the market is, know what the temperature is, know what's going on versus just you know, what I feel that these folks are trying to do is hope someone from California where that house for 1.8 on two acres is a deal and they will not have the sensitivity of us native Georgians going like, that, 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 that's, that's just too high, man. <laughs> Good Lord. Goodness gracious, buddy. 
What are you trying to do? We ain't, we ain't going for it. We ain't going for it. But um, yeah, man. Um, yeah, prices of everything are about to keep going up. Surprise. I mean, one of the things that I am surprised at is what wins on YouTube because the biggest YouTube channels, Graham Stephan ain't even in the top 100. He ain't even in the top 300 YouTube channels. There are channels out there with hundreds of hundreds of millions of subscribers. So all of them are entertainment channels. Every last one of them. Every last one of them. There is not one business channel that is even. Now Graham Stephan from a I don't I don't really watch him, so I can't really say what he does. I don't think he talks about business. So and I think Valuetainment who's kind of left business and got into pop culture. Um but the biggest channels are pure entertainment. You will see a lot of rappers, you will see a lot of singers, you will see that that's those are the biggest channels. Google the top 100 YouTube channels. Google the top 300 YouTube channels and you will see channels you ain't never heard of because uh, most of them are catered to children. Um, so that's one of the reasons you haven't heard of it because you're not the targeted demographic. But yeah, uh, prices are going up. I don't think anyone in the room is even surprised at that. What surprises me is that people want to watch a YouTube video confirming what they already know price is going up you're welcome prices are going up i mean the the looming diesel shortage one of the things that i am concerned about is the supply chain shortage the supply chain issues are getting worse they're not getting better and i have a theory on why they're getting worse i've been polling some of my friends and fellow business owners and everyone is struggling to hire people everyone and one of the reasons i feel that it's so hard to hire people is social media i have seen post after post videos now, as a person who's had jobs, I've never had a job that depleted my soul. I never had a job that I just hate this job. I've never had, I had now, when I moved into the boarding house and I was living in that situation, I worked some sucky ass jobs, but everyone wants time freedom and they want the choice to do what they want to do and they want to work remote and unless the job is because there this is something else that's winning on youtube how to become a software engineer without a degree and no experience i found some of those videos if a job is not paying one, over six figures very very hard to get people to come to work for these jobs a girl she's a nurse and she's talking about my first check as a nurse she's making like 39,000 because I crunched the numbers she's making like 75 grand a year I feel that's kind of where you know you're, you're it's you know that's where you need to be if you're hiring someone to get people to work because we have the hobosexuals and we have the children have returned home to live with mom and dad. So we have a lot of people who are able to get by without having a full time job because they're living with mom and dad or they're giving up the pipe or they're giving up the tunnel to have a place to live. Um, 
The hobosexual is a real thing. And hobosexuals are coming up in this economy. They're coming up. But it is really, really hard to get someone to work a low wage job. Like, literally. I've I've called, I ordered a pizza from Domino's and they called me 15 minutes later and says, ah, we don't have a delivery driver. And another place I tried to order some food from, it's like, hey, could you order it off DoorDash? We don't have a delivery driver. And th this, this is a huge problem. And this is what I am thinking is causing the supply chain shortage. Because typically, unless you're working in making semiconductors or software or chips or something, these jobs pay six figures. But if you're working in a manufacturing concern, it's like, let's say you make a brace for a car part and you're only going to make, you know, 15 to 17 bucks an hour. That's the struggle. It's just, you know, because I'm getting ready to do some stuff differently and I'm going to need some solid people. And this is one of the reasons I reach out and I talk to people uh, about hiring is I'm going to need some solid people to come work for me. And instead of figuring out, I'm trying to let me let me kind of show you what's in my mind. I'm trying to create a seventy thousand five thousand dollar a year position versus just getting someone to come in and do menial work. You know, I, I want to build something where you walk through the door, you know, let's start you off at 50 and that this is kind of like going to be the pitch. You're going to start off at 50 and after you show me, because I'm not going to put a time limit on it because I put a time limit on it. They're going to be waiting. They're going to be like, it's almost time for me to get that raise time. No, no. It's like, you're going to have to show me that you want the additional responsibility and the additional money that comes with it. So it's kind of like a gamification type deal versus just like, hey, you know, you're here three months and we're automatic. No, 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 no. Because here, here's the thing. You cannot tell someone that something's going to happen in a certain time period and it don't happen. You would be dealing with a very angry person like once again, in the case of divorce, when the attorney sit down with the ex-wife, it's like, yeah, you were married to him. No, you didn't start the company. No, you didn't go to the office. But guess what? Because you were a spouse and this is a community property state. Half of that business is yours. And she's like, really? Yes, ma'am. It's yours. So I can get more than child support and alimony. Absolutely. And this woman who then was completely unaware that she had access to this will now fight this man tooth and nail to get gain her percentage because she has been told legally that she has claim on that business. That's what you be dealing with when you tell people certain things. So, um, you know, the kind of people I want working for me, I want them to be dedicated. I want them to be high energy and you gonna have to pay them. It's gonna cost to be the boss. So um, pretty much the position I'm thinking about, start them off at 50 and um, we'll and then have this conversation with them. And another thing is I want them to pay them enough money where they can make it without having to work an additional job because I want them to be focused on doing what I need them to do for my company. But yeah, you know, I'm I'm like I'm, I'm this the yesterday last two days were uh, car days. Um, I gotta have a car towed. I gotta look at my. I'll probably do that tomorrow. But um, yeah, this is where we are. Prices are going up, man. Prices are going up. So don't be surprised if. The price of diesel goes up. I mean, once again, you guys are smart. You guys are adults. You know what time it is. Inflation is still because here's the thing. Unless we have a crash across the board, a crash on meat, 
a crash on milk, a crash on eggs, a crash. The price is just going to be up. Um, the living expenses for the average American, depending upon where they live, has increased $500 per month up to $2,000 per month. And that ain't going away no time soon. Nope, it's just not.